Sebastian had mentioned, Sebastian said that I think previously, just to just a reason on this for a moment, um, did God? Uh, what was what was what's the question about create create energy? Okay, since the modern scientific and there's some pseudo to the modern scientific or gnosis pseudonymous as gnosis means science scientia science actually means what do you know now modern science says well science is like um you know what they know based on experiment they can do what an experiment put this in water or put this to fire or add these chemicals and they it gives a result it's like a repeat or something but it comes down to the the root of the meaning of the word science Science comes from the Latin scientia or scientia, which basically means to know, to know, not to believe, not to even have faith so much, even though science, scientists use those terminologies. We believe that based on this, you know, this um, experiment in science, we believe that this will help us to figure out something else, whatever, right? But science means to know, right? And then in the Greek, we have gnosis. The Bible speaks about, the King James Version translation talk about um, science for all call. So we are not seeking to condemn just science in a general sense. I think a lot of so-called religious people or people come from the Bible or Judeo-Christian or some kind of religious point of view use it like kind of whitewash, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity and white Anglo-Saxon Protestant science is already biased. And we can tell their bias based on how those cultures, those peoples, this civilization has treated or wrongly misdiagnosed, for example, people of color. And misdiagnosed ancient cultures and civilizations, which they get to find out after they get to, quote, know, were actually higher and more advanced and in tune with certain things they've just come to uh, discover. But when, I think, Sebastian... This was a brief, uh, brief, uh, maybe 20, 40 minutes that I caught on, I think, a Sarnetta. He had some atheists versus a theist concerning a working model of the universe. I think that's what um, Sebastian Cole, if that's his name, the skeptic, that's what he was bringing forward, right? Basically, a working model. And it was JJ7000 who was going to respond on the opposite side so the theist theist one who believes in god or a god right versus the atheist one who says there is no god and to explain a working model of the universe so the one named sebastian on the atheist uh, you know martin's science science slash pseudoscience because many things in science they do prove certain things but then they speculate, then they philosophize, then they share their belief based on something that they've proven. They, they may prove one part of some grand scheme, you know, because they did an experiment, combine this with that and get this result and say, well, therefore, you know, this must have happened so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, you know, in some part of the universe or somewhere, and we haven't seen nothing. All they did was prove to us one thing. Right, proves us one thing by way of an experiment, and then they speculate on what this means in their belief system, their pseudoscience. So they use science and pseudoscience. Right now, Sebastian asked this question, and this is what really just prompted this right here, here, here. He asks, Well, well, um, who created energy? Like, he wants to know about who created energy. Did God, that was his question, did God create energy, right? Then he backed that up with what is popular in nowadays science, scientific, the Western Gentile scientific system, right? Saying that, well, energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. Now, has this been proven, proven, or is it something that we, in this modern, quote, science, you know, nowadays science. So it's not dismissing all of science. But they said, well, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So his question was, who created energy? Did God create energy? Back that up by saying that, well, energy can neither neither be created nor destroyed. 
that was his first question. Then he went into some monkey business about, you know, man coming from the apes, the monkeys. Why not monkeys coming from man? I, I, anyway, be that as it may, because they share over 200 something, um, um, oh, 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 some, some rhesus, rhesus something, like some type of viruses or within the DNA genetics. They share something. Now, if we were to touch on just science for a moment, many of those who are who started the Western Gentile, the European led, because let's not think that the ancient people did not have science. This is one of the um, the errors. People think that only modern science and Galileo and, and if you notice, it's all these European things, so-called white people things. You know, it's almost like they're so arrogant to think like only they had science and they always talk about the pyramids in Egypt, for example. And say, how do they build this? It is so perfectly aligned with with true north and south and to the so-called quote four corners of the earth or to the cardinal points on this earthly plane, because the earth is not a planet, but this earthly plane, right? How were they able to do this? Right? And now that they're able to go into a lower level of what they call space, outer space is really inner space, but they call it outer space, a lower level of the dome. They say, oh, well, from outer space, we get to see that it's, it's directly in the center of the earth and it's, it's like this and like that. Well, if the earth is a ball, as they tell us, how could the pyramids be in the center of the earth? Just think about that for one moment. <laughs> Now, the earthly plane model, basically we have a better idea about the, the, the centralness of it. But be that as it may, how were the ancients able to create, for example, the pyramids? I'm going to use the pyramids as a prime example because it points to a 180 degree opposite perspective of science and ancient science. Now, of course, even with modern science, certain things can be proven can be experimented on and certain things are beyond our experiment like for example the big bang theory the big bang that uh, there was really nothing but a, a small singularity of matter and this small singularity of matter exploded or whatnot well how do we know this how do we know this i mean it's, it's a great theory it, it, it could be religion it, maybe it's the scientific religion but how do we know? Or when the question from the theist comes back at them, well, who created? Who created this 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 small matter? There was a little small matter. And then one of the leading atheists and JJ um seven thousand had mentioned it, and I was happy that he mentioned it, right? Um a good basic first presentation. We didn't see the whole thing, but first presentation was going to like sacred geometry. That's why we're using this particular still right here. You know, um he said that who was that guy Hawkins Stephen Hawkins all right one of the their greatest modern day scientific atheists so forth and so on and he said that concerning the singularity of the big bang of this this small densely packed um something that just exploded and from that explosion came the universe and this is why the universe appears to be expanding it must have had a point of beginning so there was some point of beginning, the scientists say, and ones like Stephen Hawkins had said before, I think he passed away now, right? He had said, um, I can understand why he, so, some of them are angry at a God or this whole God idea. It's because of their condition. If you notice from the European whitewash, Western, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant perspective, as more and more things become known or science, like the black man, woman, and child is not the inferior as they had speculated in their pseudo-religion and their pseudo-science. As they do more tests, experiments, and see certain things, they begin to recognize, wait, black people's genes and DNA are what they would term to be dominant. Just like the laws of um, energy says everything goes from the hotter to the colder, always in that direction, from the hotter to the colder you know, based on the so-called natural laws. Well, Stephen Hawking said that, well, um, it came from nowhere. You know, the singularity that caused the Big Bang came from nowhere. But yet, in his book, like one of his books and his writings that he wrote about, that people applauded and hailed to be such a brilliant, knowledgeable, scientific sort of thing, he says that stars and black holes and the rest of it cannot come from nothing. And then something interesting, Sebastian, the atheist, said that, 
you know, what we are able to, what's observable. So as I started to listen to him continue and go about his opening, you know, working model of the universe, I began to hear him state that, you know, what is observable, that there, he admitted by not overtly admitting, but covertly admitting that there is a level of creation or of everything that's around us that's not observable. So science recognized that even based on what we observe, there is an unobservable area. I mean, how many times has science made or staked a certain claim based on experiments and speculation and philosophies based on the results? They do experiments. They do do experiments. But then when we talk about science of creation and creation science from the atheist perspective, they always try to say, well, there's an area that we don't see. We don't see this area, but there's something there that we don't see. You know, when we step off the planet Earth and go in other places, this is the only place that life is, uh, has appeared to be. Uh, how do they know? How do they know? Have they stepped off the face of the planet Earth? It like goes back to the old thing about whether the Earth is so-called flat Earth or whether it's a ball bouncing around or whether it's a flat plane, flat, flat, like a pancake or whatever, you know. There's extremes on both sides. But here's the main point. That if NASA really has gone out there into outer space, as they say, how come we don't have one accurate picture? I mean, we have some high-powered cameras and telescopes and digital technology. Why are all their models of the Earth, models of the Earth, and it's no real pictures? You check, you know, if you're going to go somewhere, if you said you went to see it's the grandma's house to see grandma, I said, no, you didn't. And he said, yes, I did. And we have like cell phones and everything. Take a picture. You know, um, let's have like, a, you know, like a, what, what they call a video chat. Let's video chat or something. Let's actually see it. So when people go into the investigation, they say, wait, all these pictures from outer space that they give of the earth from this year, from that year, the next year, the next year, they all are different. The CGI, yeah, the, the ecstasy. Well, that makes me highly suspicious. Have they actually gone anywhere other than a couple of hundred miles above, you know, above the clouds? They, they've, they've gone a couple of hundred. Some of those close, tight pictures appear, and I have to emphasize appear to be real. But let's just sum this up right here. His first question, I want to just address his first question. When ones ask us from a, a, a Hebrew, a, a Torah perspective, I have, to, I have to contextualize what I'm going to say right here, right? Where did energy come from? Who, who created energy? Did God create energy? So I'm responding to this not from a general gods and lords, you know, because there's many gods, there's many lords, you know, even the Bible says there's many gods and there's many lords. It said the children of Israel went after other gods and other, you know, other gods whom the God had not given them. I thought that was an interesting verse. Just got to put that there. Did God, or let's speak in our Hebraic terms, did Elohim, did Chaylehim, did Elohim, the powers, the true good, the true God, did the powers, Elohim, did he create energy did god create energy our response to that is that he is energy or powers he is powers see elohim in the hebrew is a plural word elohim is a plural word right some say it means powers and we have traced this to is the ethiopic the most traceable root of that ancient semitic language the is the ethiopic and we have the Ayale and the Chayale in the terms Hebraically that comes to us as El and Ha'el, Ha'el and Elohim and Allahayim as some would, you know, different many mansions in my father's house. So some of the other Israelites might pronounce it a little bit differently, but a basic pointing of it from the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, Elohim. Elohim means powers. Very interesting word because it's the same word that is used of the true creator, right? The true God, right? Or powers. 
Now, here's what some assume that, well, since the word Elohim is a plural word, interesting enough, in the Hebrew, it's always used in a, wait for it, singularity. This is interesting. In the Hebrew, the same word that elsewhere refers to gods, uh, gods or powers, as many ancient people believed in other, you know, gods or powers. They believe in the different forces of the universe. It's almost like the scientists believe in the different forces of nature or the different um, um, aspects of nature that they have categorized and compartmentalized and say, well, there's this force, there's that force, there's like gravity, there's this, there's that, you know, entropy, thermodynamics, so forth and so on. And they believe that each of these forces working on each of these other forces created you know, created the, the universe or brought about the universe just by chance or not by intelligent design, not by creating. In fact, even Sebastian has said, he said that a judge has struck down the whole creation. You know, there are those who have what they call the creationist view, that the, the intelligent design, and that a judge in a court case, he was on a reference to court case, has struck it down. That was one of the most laughable moments. So an individual judge, you remember these same judges that said that um, there was one, another judge who had ruled very interestingly in uh, another human um, condition matter concerning pornography. And this other judge said that he don't know what porn is, but he knows it when he sees it. I guess that's like these people with God, right? They don't know what God is, but they know it when they see it. So is God energy? Are we saying that God is energy? We're saying that the true God from a Hebrew, a learned, intelligent Hebrew perspective and based on the science of the scripture, it gives us the ability to investigate science and see his fingerprint. See the fingerprint. When I say he, there is the she aspect. Some of you already know this from Bereshith. We're in Bereshith, right? Which is the first words of the Hebrew Bible. We have Reshith. Some say Bereshith, but really properly point is Bereshith. Bit by way of or in by way of reishith. Now Solomon's proverb tells us that wisdom is feminine, is she. Wisdom is the reishith to show that even in our working model of the universe, we recognize the double helix, right? Of the, for lack of a better word, the 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 forces, right? That are male or masculine, right? And the forces that are are feminine. Some might look at that as the the positive forces or the negative forces. Not looking at it in in religious terms of um, good and evil. Some people confuse good and evil with the positive forces, right? Which can be termed Hebraically the male forces and the female forces. So what Genesis teaches us, right, from an intelligent, you know, people are intelligent design, but intelligent study of the scripture and this is why a lot of the best of the scientists also were those who had some inclination to a more or less God perspective. In fact even the investigation into science, true science began from those who would consider themselves theists. Not from those who would consider themselves atheists but from those who consider themselves theists. Many of them sought to prove Right, what they believed and what they were getting from their study and meditation on the Word of God or their translation of the Bible, they sought to prove many of these things. We can go into that. So even when those who say it's about science, not about religion, it's very interesting to find that many of the primary scientists of the Western Gentile model right, were those who themselves had some inclination to to a theist that there was there must be intelligent design and creation all they sought to do was to understand the laws right the laws see all they have discovered is names for things that scripturally biblically are named and identified otherwise this is why when we point to the first um the first chapter of genesis so no, God, in that sense, did not create, in that sense, energy. If it is true that energy cannot be created or destroyed, then God did not create energy, so to speak. 
he is the energy, the power. And it's through she, through wisdom, what we call hakma in the Hebrew, through wisdom. This is the intelligent part of design, right? Through wisdom, right? Do we now be able to study these various different forces that scientists give some very interesting names and sometimes in their um, articulation of these various different forces as we study and study beyond the, the Western Gentile translation, because a lot of things get lost in translation because even the translation is relying on either a man or a group of ones and ones who are trying to understand a language that is not indigenous that's not indigenous to them. This is why now with the once lost now found black and brown sheep or job people, the beta Israel rising up, I'm finding that there is so much progress that's happening even among some of the different Hebrew Israelite camps and different ones from this Hebrew, we of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, but other, you know, Hebrew camps because there's something in us that resonates you know, with this perspective and through this perspective, right, we can qualify, verify, prove or disprove the various different, quote, scientific theories, right, the various scientific theories. So on the energy point, what is called energy, I think uh, Sebastian had a, had a, I think it was delta, delta U equals, what, what was it, Q minus W, I think it was delta U equals Q minus W said he said show show God right you know like in this equation right here he wanted to know the equation for God right the equation for the source we're gonna show you the equation for the source right here so right here 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 is here is the equation the Hebrew equation scientific remember science is based on what you know See, people might have heard of Elohim. They might have read about it, read what other people say about Elohim and say, oh, it means God, it means this. But they don't really know it, right? They've heard, you know, like I've heard about things and the only way I get to know it is by studying it and coming to an experiential, the real gnosis, coming to an experiential level that I can say, okay, what I heard about, what I study is true, right? Because of and then I can bring forth my exhibit. So right here, here is the Aleph Lamed He Yod Mean. Now, this is, this right here, of course, has the pointing. If we would look into the most archaic, these five letters, there's actually a six letter. There's actually a six letter, right? The Cholem next to the Lamed makes the low sound in the e lo he yim e lo some will say alahayim pronouncing it from baby hebrew where you use the basic alef the basic vowel right and add the basic vowel to each of the consonants so here the a l h y m when read from right to left some hebrews will say alahayim 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 right we point it more correctly as Elohim, Elohim. And between the Lamed and the He, there's a wow, there's a wow. Here we see between the Lamed and the He, there is this right here. You see this dot right here? That dot right there? That dot is called the Cholem, Cholem. Interesting that the word for, for world is Olam, Olam. The word for dream, is halam. I'm pointing that out because according to the Hebrew science, right, we can also verify other levels of science that have been proven by modern experimentation. By modern experimentation. I was going to say, you know, a lot of the scientists, you know, out there, right, besides we, the black Jews, are white Jews, right, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And in our study of the scripts, in our study of the Hebrew linguistics, the Hebrew language, it became immediately clear to us. Right? This is based on our experiential knowledge. You know, it's like if scientists go and do an experiment, right? These scientists do the experiment, but the other scientists didn't do the experiment, and these scientists say, Well, we know this is true. 
because of our experiment. We saw this for ourselves. The other scientists can say, no, we, we don't know this. No, that's not true because he never did that experiment. But if they were to do the same experiment and be honest, open and honest, they would and should come to the same conclusions or even a greater conclusion of the truth. Right? So that little dot we want to show you right there is like that singularity. Another important thing about the whole singularity matter concerning that matter that was there to cause the big bang this the big bang is based on something exploding well what exploded they said there was a small tightly compacted you know matter like i don't know if it was as small as a as a grain of mustard seed i don't know how big it don't really tell us how big it was but that was there in the beginning and it exploded stephen hawkins before he passed away he basically said when he was asked, well, 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 where did that come from? He said it came from nowhere. <laughs> now, 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 you tell me, which is the, 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 the false religion? A lot of the scientists who are atheists, they create based on their pseudoscience, taking some true principles, some true experiments, but based on their bias, right, against the true source of creation they become dismissive of even the evidence singularity the singularity that means one the shema of yisrael what is the shema shema yisrael adonai loheinu adonai achad how modern in the modern hebrew said like that more ancient pointing shema yisrael yahweh loheinu yahweh achad properly translated here o israel hear now when it says to hear there's two modes of hearing there's one hearing that we hear through our physical ear our physical ear to the outer world and then there's the inner hearing right because it's five wise virgins five foolish that's to say we have more than just the five senses this is why people will testify to cognition and premonition. They feel something, they vibe something, and then it happens. And we ask them, how did you know this? They say, well, they felt this, they perceived this, and it came about. I'm sure a lot of us have experienced that. A lot of us have been in the first person that it actually happened to us. And other people ask asking, well, how did you know this? And you, like you heard it, but you didn't hear this with your outer ear. I mention that because Sebastian and other atheists often say, well, if God just spoke these, he, he spoke it into creation. By what means did he speak it? So to, so to bring this forward right here, that there is, when we talk about speaking, people think speaking is only conducted. For example, have you ever spoken within yourself? Like you're listening to me right now, you're thinking in your head, you're speaking. Right? Can I hear you? Can the can person next to you hear you? No. But are you speaking? Are you speaking? You're speaking, but you're speaking in an invisible realm to everyone else, but it's actually going on. From your perspective, you are actually speaking. Right? From your perspective within you, you're actually speaking. But someone could say, no, you're not speaking because I don't hear you. So there's two modes of speaking. Right? And speaking, even the Hebrew and getting back to the Afro-Shemitic language, speaking, the word for speaking, is also the word for intent. It's like for, for, for thought and thinking. So in other words, there is speech, for example, there are dog sounds, right? The dog whistle. If you get a dog whistle and you blow some of the dog whistles, we as human beings can't hear it. But the dogs will respond to it. Right? There are waves that move below the observable conscious frequency that if you aim these waves, you know, these particles at a person, a person will feel something even though you don't see anything. I'm pointing this out because there is more than just our observable level of creation. We know it from even our own being if we are honest. Someone is talking to me and I'm listening to what they're saying and I'm saying something in my head. The person doesn't hear it, but the conversation that's going on in my mind is real, but it's not observable from the outside. Science points out there are unobservable levels of the universe. They say there was a Big Bang. We ask where the Big Bang came from. They say it came from nowhere. They call this particle or this substance 
tightly compacted, dense substance, they say that this is the singularity. We say that he who be who he be, the Elohim, is the singularity. We say this all the time when we say the Shema. Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel. Yahweh Loheinu. He who be who he be. Now, when we say he, I, I got to put a little footnote here. Because someone said, where is she? We pointed to she in the beginning. They said, where is she? Right? Well, in the first chapter of Bereshith, right, in Reishith, in wisdom, see, we having the knowledge, having the scientific, the Hebrew scientific understanding, that first word in Genesis, Bereshith. Someone say you Barashith, but the Bereshith, in Reishith. Hokma, wisdom, she is the reishi. Let us make man, right? Let's create man in our image. Check. And after our likeness. What does it say after that? Male and female, he created them. Bereshi, Genesis goes on to say, right? According to the symbolical, the narrative on the surface, the superficial, the surface narrative, as well as the symbolical reference. It's like when they write out an equation. Like modern science writes out the equation. They use Greek letters or Greek ciphers, and they use some th different linguistic scientific ciphers. They're using basically letters. And they say, this formula right here, when we look at these formulas, if we're not scientists, if we haven't been initiated or taught about it, it doesn't make sense. E equals MC squared. We, we, we know it, and people know it now because people say, well, okay, that's, 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 that's theory, so forth and so on. Right? But to the scientists, it's their own language. Just like to us as the Hebrews, there's this language here. When it says that that, that woman right, was brought out of the side component of man. King James Version translated as rib. And this really has, you know, people say, oh, a woman was made from the rib, the rib. In the Hebrew, the word doesn't really mean rib. It means that which is at the side. Right? From the side component, we define that in our Hebrew scientific knowledge and learning and experimentation, you know, because we have to go through it. Does it mean this, this word here? Does it mean rib? No, that, that word don't mean rib. It means something on the side. The word is used for that which is on the side, even the side of the ark, the side of the ark of the covenant. So how could a woman, right, be drawn out of something from a man? Then we remember, oh, Science, nowadays science, has verified what the ancients knew about chromosome. The chromosome. The chromosome in males is what? What's the chromosome in males? According to science that is pretty much provable, it's X and Y. Uh-oh. So in he, a male, we have the X and Y. That's the male chromosome. What's the female chromosome? The, the woman's chromosome. X and X. Oh, that's interesting. We have X and Y in the male. So even, right, when we say Elohim, <laughs> right, though it is he, she is in he, just as she was in Adam. Remember, let us create man in our image after our likeness, male and female. He, he created them. Now, the singularity also is in the creation. Although Elohim, elsewhere, for other gods or gods that came afterward, gods of men and people of different ancient spiritualities that may have had true principles, sometimes they had, because they're dealing with the natural elements, or sometimes even in other religions, there are true principles, right, that we can also find in ours. We have the singularity, Hebraically, the singularity. How do we know the singularity? Shema, Yisrael, Eloheinu, right? Yahweh Eloheinu. He who be who he be, Adonai Eloheinu, our powers, right? Our powers, right? Our power source, Yahuwah Adonai Achad, Echad, Echad means one. But what that Shema is actually saying is he who be or becomes who he be. So he becomes, he bees, who he be. Right? Our power, signifying the Elohim powers, this is where they get the seven from, right? And the frequency, the seven, the seven primary, right, powers. There are seven primary powers, but in the true God, the true creator, it's in a singularity. And he created through his wisdom. Right here, 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 right? So the divine feminine in the beginning, 
Bereshit. Now, some talk about the pointings, not to get off on the nikodo, the pointing. Some people say it comes from the Greek and so forth. So I heard some pseudo scholars, at least this is part of their pseudo scholarship. That is incorrect. It goes to the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And you have to know about Ezra, Nehemiah, and the Ethiopian connection with the manuscripts and why the Masoretic has the pointings that it does. Right? Because of the Israelites of Ethiopia and documents they received and certain places that Ezra had doubted the pointing of it. Right? Doubted the pointing of it. There's certain places. So sometimes there's other dots. But they could be the cantillations, chanting, the way it's chanted. This here is not Barashith. Barashith. Right? Barashith. It's Bereshith. Bereshith. See, the seven sounds there are seven song songs right seven sounds right just as we now know based on what they call white light when go refracted through a trinity right through the hashalush ha kadosh the hebrew trinity the true trinity is the hebrew trinity when light source light goes through a Per, uh, a, 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 a prism, what's called a prism, it refracts right, into seven bands. Now, we can go through the seven bands in the sense of radio waves, right, infrared waves, visible light, you know, we have the ether, we could go through the different, you know, there's a seven, and each of these are wavelengths. It's proven that light has, though we see one light, Right, there are the seven bands, the seven frequencies, right, and they can be theoretically or with the proper tools and scientific knowledge, it can be separated. Each wave can be separated, they modulate at different frequencies. See, this is now pointing to the, the Hebrew science. Why is the very same word for God when it is pointing to the God of Israel or the source of Israel always in a singularity but also pointing out a trinity there's a trinity in singularity because of the three-dimensional world the visible world that we are in we're in a tri-dimensional world right here 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 but anyway let's just do this right here 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 now the first part of the Bible or the Hebrew Bible Bereshith bara Elohim et ha shemayim wa et ha aret. Translated often as in the beginning. Hebraically, we know that it more or less says in beginning or literally in wisdom. Bereshith, in she. Reshith. Reshith is a female word that comes from the Hebrew word rosh or raash, rash, rosh, which means head. Reishith is the female form of head, but that word head also has a contextual based on the context of, of, of principle. The head to start the principle, right? The head to start the principle. In the beginning, in the principle, or directly in wisdom, in she, in wisdom, because from the science, all of visible creation was actually birthed out. All of visible creation was birthed out before there was nothing, right? Before there was basically nothing, but he had to create a womb, and the womb is expanding. Yes, the womb is expanding, or what they call the universe. <laughs> it is expanding. This is true, right? And notice when they talk about, um, they know that the universe is expanding, they go back to the science of light, the science of light, which we just briefly alluded to. And they said because of that red frequency, they study the red frequency. How interesting, the red frequency is the long waves or what's called the radio waves. They're able to observe that frequency and as you look at a spectrum, you can see how it goes from red, right, to orange, to, to yellow, to green, to sky blue, to nighttime sky, right, or darker blue, the purple and the fuchsia color right and then it goes to the the white light right there the hebrews 
and the ancient peoples, other ancient people, in addition to the Hebrews, also understood this science. It's the Western Gentile world that has newly discovered, by some means of their own technology, observation, so forth and so on, what the ancients already knew. So Bereshith, in she, in wisdom, and as a backup to this, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 in the Hebrew brings out that wisdom that she is the Reishith. So basically what Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 is giving us through the keys of Solomon, that wise man who had that wisdom given by Yahweh Eloheinu, right? what he's showing us here is how to decipher Moshe's first book. That in wisdom, and then when you get to Proverbs chapter 8, she says that she was there, the divine feminine, from the very beginning. Now, in white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant Christianity, they have a he, 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 and there's no she. That was never there for us as Hebrews. Hebrews, we understood the role of he, right, as well as she. It's like a male and a female, right? You have a womb man, right, with the womb, and you have the male with the seed. The word is the seed, planting the seed in the womb, and the womb producing, creating, you know, this is why the sacred geometry of the universe really does show the fingerprint of Elohim. Bereshith, in wisdom, bara. Bara doesn't technically, technically Hebrew, I can't say, Hebrew doesn't always abide by the conventional rules you would assume it to. Because Elohim, literally would be God or gods or powers. That means it should really have been, if it was speaking of many gods, Bereshith Baru. Bereshith Baru. But it says Bara, Bara. Bara actually means he, right? The singularity, he, right? With she, right? His wisdom and through his wisdom, Remember the XY, remember the XY, right? In the, in the wisdom, he created the powers. Think about the light spectrum when we're thinking about it's one light. You see, you see that white light. But then if you were able to see that which is not visible of that white light, you can see the different spectra. You can see the different bands. You can see the different powers of light even in that one light. In wisdom, the singularity he created, right, the powers, or let's translate this because it might sound a little weird in English. In wisdom, the powers, he created the heavens and the earth. In she, in wisdom, right, in wisdom, Elohim, the power is the source. When we say the power is the source, the primary source and power of energy that science tells us cannot be created nor destroyed because it's his power, his power. It can be transmuted just as we have with the light spectrum. Right? But anyway, I went on a little bit longer than I thought I would right here, here, here. Yes, I, I like to go on a little bit more right here. But just to explain... Like, um, did God, right? The question here is, did God create energy? Our learned Hebrew, based on the Hebrew science, we would say that no. God did not, or Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true good, the true God, Ha'elohim, right? Did not create energy, but it is his, right, it is his energy through she, through wisdom, right, that the energy is in the universe in this various form. Just as we have the white light, and within the white light, there's a different spectra of light. They vibrate at different frequencies, right? This is all provable, right? How be it that in the Hebrew science, by the choice of Hebrew words, when un understood according to the science of the scriptures, it proves the right things and the correct things that modern science has discovered, but it also sheds light 
on the pseudoscience. So this is how when we listen to some type of scientific stuff, we can tell, okay, yeah, that is true right there. That's the principal point. Oh, no, that's mumbo jumbo there. That's something we can tell when they're inserting their atheistic, you know, their atheistic religion, almost like what, 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 what Stephen Hawking said. He says, where did the, he was asked, where did the black, the, the, the black bang, the, the big bang come from? Right, you know, like like where was this singularity? He said it came from nowhere. But then elsewhere in his writings, he says that things like black holes and other things cannot come from nowhere. So even what we see, science admits this. The the real levels of modern science admits that even what we see is based on that which we don't see. One time when he talked about the atom, proton, and neutron, somebody would have been like, oh, that's you crazy. There's no atom, proton, neutron until they got magnifying glasses and lenses and microscopes and was able to zoom in. And then they saw this, right? They saw that what is right in front of us, we were not able to see it. The same thing with Elohim, with the true good, the true God, the powers and the laws, the laws, that's the next level as we're speaking about wisdom, wisdom she. Torah, Torah, the direction instruction was called the law, but the direction instruction, she. The soul, the psyche, she. So we have to understand the divine double helix of creation. So unlike some people who come from the Bible perspective and they might have gotten caught up on, you know, some kind of, you know, anti-female, anti in some sexist kind of point of view, or caught up in calcified pineal gland wasp Christianity, they're not able to perceive wisdom. As the scripture says, they lack wisdom. I would reference them to read and study Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, as well as the eighth chapter, the eighth chapter of Proverbs, the Mishle Shlomo, the Proverbs of Solomon. But more to come. Solomon was the wisest man. <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, they said, right? Right. But a wiser than Solomon is here. Here, here, here. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Loheinu Yahweh Achad. Sima, Sima Rastafari. Yes, I.